So I welcome you here to what I call a sanity gathering. <laughs> Our subject all day will be, who am I? Why am I here on this planet? And who cares? That seems to be, in the years that I've been helping people, the biggest three questions that I have encountered. So because I constantly encounter it in people's battles, I figured, why don't we teach about it? That way we can figure out who we are and why we're here and who cares. And so, you know, I, I'm looking forward to teaching this with you today. One thing before I get into this subject uh, to kind of waken you up here, I ask people, because I like people to think, and so I ask people sometimes, well, when you made your peace with God the Father and accepted what Jesus paid for you at the cross and salvation, and you bent your knee and you became born again, what did you become? And everybody says, I became a Christian. No, that's not what you became. You did not become a Christian when you became born again. Now, I see you all shriveling around here saying, hey, Martha, he's gone too far now. Well, let me ask you a question. They were first called Christians at Antioch because they perceived they were followers of Christ. Well, what were they before they were called Christians at Antioch? They were called, who knows? They were just people that had embraced this gospel. When you became born again, you didn't become a Christian first. You became a son and daughter of the living Father of all spirits. Mark this down today once and for all. I find many Christians, but I'm not sure that God is their father. Because if God was their father, they would do the things of their father. They would think like their father. They would act like their father. They would produce the fruits of, well, that one son, Jesus, did some things, didn't he? Everybody knows that Jesus was the son of God, and we're going to cover this today, but who do you think you are? Are you sons and daughters of God, too? I see. That's going to take us on a long journey, isn't it? Who am I? Well, modern science, and I... Uh, when I was in college a few years ago, uh, one of the courses I got an A in was zoology. And the premise of zoo zoology is all of you are just animals. That's what you are. You're, a, a, you're in an involved state of an advanced being uh, of an animal. And uh, the, you are evolved species from monkeys. But in Ecclesiastes, it says this, who knows the spirit of man that goes upward and the spirit of the beast that goes down to the earth? Now, you're slightly different than an animal. You have a spirit, eternal spirit. An animal does not. That's why you could have chicken yesterday and not feel guilty, unless it was your pet chicken. They tell me once you name a pet, you can't eat it. That's what I was told by some farmers. So you could have and partake of a chicken or a fish or whatever, and it's, it's okay. It, it's, it's perfectly fine. But you are a spirit and you have a soul, and you live in a mobile home. You are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a mobile home. The soul is the bridge between the external physical world and the spirit world, where God is and where your enemy is. The external world is welcome to the planet and those around you. And right in between is you. 2 Corinthians 3.18, but we all with open face beholding 
in a glass the glory of the Lord. And we are changed into that same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. How many of you want to change into God's image? See, our subject right now is, who am I? Who am I? You know, many times we've been formed in the image of our families or our cultures. We're formed in the iniquity of what has been formed ahead of us. And we end up dressed up like actors and actresses in something that we're expected to be. And you need to re reach deep into your, into your spirit and ask God, who am I? You're not an accident. There is no accidental birth. There's things that interfere with birth. There's things that interfere with our lives. But we must understand and apprehend God's hope, his faith, and his will for our lives. That's why you got born again, so that you could be changed into his image. And you could escape the pollutions and the corruptions even of your own family tree. And you know it's all there. <clears throat> now, one of the things that we need to consider is, are we really in subjection to the Father of all spirits? You say, how can I be in subjection? I've never met him. Well, you did. You did really in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, you see me. You've seen the Father. It doesn't mean that Jesus is the Father. It means that how Jesus thought and what he would say and how he would act, it was a mirror image of the Father. Jesus said, I only say the things I heard my Father say. I only do the things I saw my Father do. And he is, Jesus is the living word of the Father. I help people understand the Godhead this way. God the Father thought it, God the Word said it, and God the Holy Spirit does it. It is the unity of the plural unity of the Echad, the plural unity of the Godhead. And in this, we can apprehend our Father in heaven and his personality and how he thinks because he is a living being, the Ancient of Days, Adonai, Yehovah, is the Father of all spirits. And he is the one that, saved you through Jesus Christ. It was the Father that came and got you. So I guess you're pretty special, aren't you? So you responded to something. Maybe it's time now to figure out what you responded to. And it was more than avoiding hell and going to heaven. That was the bonus. You're going to, we get into the teaching later today, is why am I here? You're going to find out the will of God for your life. And it may not be what other people think. We're so busy conforming to the expectations of others, even from childhood. You know, one of the main diseases I've dealt with that comes on people because they're always trying to please a parent and where they go to college and what job they do and all the things. So all their life they've been formed in the expectation of a parent. The disease is chronic fatigue syndrome. That disease comes out of performance to meet the expectation of another. I don't think we should be meeting the expectation of another. I think we should be finding out who we are in God. It may not be what somebody else thinks. And so we're always conforming to the image of success, to the image of industry, to the image of religion, and we all look like a bunch of clones, waddle in, waddle out, and wonder what happened to us in churches. But why did we come to church? Because it was expected, right? Wrong. And there's many, many subjects we could talk about all that. I want to give you something to think about. All created beings, all created beings, I'm not other than animals. All created beings, seed of Adam or seed of God, are considered in God's mind to be, their, to be his sons. And in this dispensation of time, his daughters. 